It is dark, dangerous and violent in Takriya Square tonight. Protesters fighting for the place they declared the centre of their revolution and supporters of the president trying to drive them out. From the morning, the atmosphere was different. The president's men appeared. The first time I've seen them in any numbers in a week here. It didn't feel spontaneous. Many of them were bussed in, and a lot of the placards looked professionally made. Huge changes coming, and they don't like it. They face losing party privileges, and the only leader many of them have ever known. We are the Egyptians. We are Egyptians. We choose our leader. Muhammad Hassan Mubarak is our leader. Is our leader. Our leader. As the supporters of the president moved closer to Takriya Square, it got much nastier. They lined up on the edge of the square, trading insults with the opponents of the regime who seized it last Friday. The pro Mubarak demonstrators stretch way back there, back towards the flyover. It seems to me that they have more people out there than there are in here. The tension is rising in, a, in quite a threatening way. And then the president's supporters broke through, chanting, he will not leave. At first, the protesters fell back as fast as they could. Some weren't fast enough. But they collected themselves and counter-attacked, and volleys of stones went both ways. Most of the afternoon, the clashes ebbed and flowed across the heart of Egypt's capital. The army had warned the protesters to get out earlier in the morning. Men on camels and horses joined the battle on the president's side. Soldiers pulled out some casualties, but didn't intervene. I'm calling the army to stand in front of their responsibilities. No, no with Mubarak. the people, no whatever Mubarak. their opinion is. Mubarak, go to hell. We don't want this. Some of the president's people were captured by the protesters. Both sides claim that their opponents are paid for what they're doing. This is the whole responsibility of Hosni Mubarak. Hosni Mubarak is killing his people. This is President Hosni Mubarak trying to reassert his authority over the center of his capital city. For a leader like him, it is a terrible humiliation to have a demonstration like this going on for so many days. Dozens of casualties on the anti-government side were taken to an improvised dressing station. It overflowed out of the mosque where it was based into the street. The doctor in charge didn't have much time to talk. I just sent one now to the hospital with a ruptured globe. His globe ruptured. And he's a kid, 17 years. He said many of the wounds were caused by knives as well as stones. The violence overwhelmed them all. The protesters thought the president's rapid departure was a done deal. The regime has entrenched itself in power since the 1950s. It will not go quietly. And it's now estimated that between 800 and 1,000 people were injured in those battles, with three killed, taking the tally to at least eight. Well, Brian Thompson rejoins us now. Brian, it appears that the media has now become a target for the pro-government protesters. Have you seen any evidence of that? Oh, we've seen evidence all around us. Uh, we ourselves, we arrived here early yesterday afternoon and unbeknown to us, we drove straight into those protests. The protests are happening very near to the hotel where the media is staying. We came up against a roadblock and our car was surrounded, rocked. They were bashing on the windows, telling us to get out. But we managed to get to the hotel. We had a good, quick-thinking taxi driver and we managed to get there. But when we got in, what we saw was a, a steady stream of reporters coming through 
through the door, having been roughed up. A lot of them lost their cameras. Uh, our own Amo Amos Roberts from Dateline w was beaten up. He had to stay away from the hotel last night. An ABC crew lost their camera, lost their passports. Yes, uh, the, the pro-Mubarak supporters are not happy with the international coverage that has been uh, coming out of here. And they were just taking cameras off, off everybody they saw. They uh, do not want us here, and such is the situation. None of us have been able to go out on the streets with a camera this morning. Dangerous times indeed, Brian. Um, there are suspicions that the Mubarak supporters were well organised. What do we know about them? Well, uh, it seems. Uh, look, I think there were some genuine support, uh, some genuine supporters of Mubarak there yesterday. These protests have been going on for ten days, and people are getting fed up with it. <coughs> people who rely on daily income, if you like. So the, the, those, those, those people want to see an end to these protests. And there is another segment of the population who, who feel sorry for, for President Mubarak, who think that he does not deserve this. But undoubtedly, there were agent provocateurs there. We spoke to some of the protesters who were out there, and, and they caught some of the people that were attacking them. And they say some of them had police ID on them, and the others told them that they had been paid to be there. In my mind that, that there's no doubt this is a state-sponsored attempt to end these protests. Janice? Thanks, Brian. That's SBS senior correspondent Brian Thompson bringing us the latest from Cairo.